Roger, we are green light for extraction. Ammo weapons resupply inbound. Lies on HVT, going loud. Hey guys, I'm Prodigy from Airsoft Team Kilo23. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Mech Box. Now, you know, we've been doing a lot of G36s lately, and we're still going to continue with the G36s. Last two episodes of Inside the Mech Box, we did the lower end G36s, the AIM Top 36C and the JG G36KRIS. Now, we got two more. We're going to move to the higher end G36s. Today we're going to check out the S&T G36 CV. So, what's different about this gun? Well, A, it's in the high-end category, so it's a little better made, but you're paying a little bit more too. B, dang, it's got a blowback feature. But enough about the externals of this gun. Let's open this guy up, check out the guts of the gun. That includes the mech box, the motor, and the hop-up chamber, and we'll go over them all in detail. Now we can go ahead and disassemble the gun, see what's inside of it, and check out everything. Now let's go ahead and check out the hop-up chamber, barrel, and bucking first of all. This is a little different from a standard G36, but it will take TM-style G36 chambers. The barrel's brass, it's probably a standard bore, but um, to my knowledge, Ares which this is a clone of, as a tight bore 6.03 barrel, this may or may not. I'm just going to assume for now that it's a standard bore 6.08 millimeter barrel. Now with the hop-up fully engaged, you can kind of see that's sort of an H nub, but it doesn't really do too well. The hop-up does not go on very far. Um, you probably won't be able to use heavier than 0.25 gram rounds with this gun. But it looks decent. I'm not sure what kind of accuracy and range it's going to get yet. The machine work on the barrel looks pretty decent, and the crowning on the end of the barrel actually looks pretty good too. Additionally, the bucking actually looks pretty good. It seems like it's the same thing you find in a lot of um, SEMA, AKs, and stuff like that, where it has the sort of H shape, where it hits the nub. And it's pretty soft too, so we'll have to see how well it does as far as consistency and accuracy. One thing I was a little worried about here is that the top, where the nub is inserted into the hop-up chamber, Looks like it's been kind of um, makeshift cut. It's like it's been hacksawed down. It's a little weird and uh, worries me a little bit. But uh, it seems to be doing fine. Uh, so far, I haven't had a problem with it. So I would imagine you're all curious, how does the blowback mechanism work? Pretty simple. It's a mechanical blowback. So every time the piston is pulled back by the gears and motor, this little bar here on top is going to be pulled back as well. So it's pulled back, then it's pushed forward by the bolt spring. Now the bolt is going to sit resting at front here. It's going to have a spring right along here. Every time the pistons pull back, the bolt is going to retract like that, but not all the way. It's going to go to about probably here. Then when the piston is released, the spring from the bolt takes over, which sits behind that, not the actual AEG spring, and pushes this forward. This is kind of a fun thing. It puts a lot of recoil compared to a standard gun into your gun. Now, if you've ever seen the internals of the Ares G36, realize this S&T G36 is a direct clone of Ares. S&T, from my knowledge, branched off from Ares, so they should be exactly the same thing, same materials, all that good stuff. Let's see how true that is. Let's open up the gearbox and see what's in there. Now, before I forget, this gun also has a few really cool features. The bolt catch actually works, so you pull the bolt back, press this button upward, it's just inside the trigger guard and your bolt will catch. Then you pull the bolt back and it'll release it. Now, when you push this button like so, this bar here on the side is actuated. It doesn't seem like much, but when you push this bar down, it releases the anti-reversal latch. This will decycle your gun and save your gun's life. Whenever you're done playing for the day, just give this button a push, it'll decycle your gun, and your spring will be just as powerful the next day instead of being slightly weaker from having it be compressed for a week or two. Now, although this is supposed to be a direct clone of Ares, it's clear once I had the gearbox open, it really is not a perfect clone. It's very similar in a lot of ways, but not dead on. So I'll go ahead and take all the parts out and we can check everything out. So, first let's check out the air compression system in the gun. 
We'll start with the piston and piston head. Now, the Ares G36, when I opened mine up oh, about a year ago, it had a black piston and it had seven metal teeth. This S&T clone of Ares actually has just the standard. It looks very similar to JG, actually. It's got one metal tooth. It's a standard polycarb piston. Second to last tooth is not removed. And it looks like pretty, uh, pretty common Chinese quality. The piston head actually is ported, unlike the Ares model. And it's held in the back by one of the standard lugs. It's kind of heavy, but it keeps the piston head on for a little while, at least. The spring is actually kind of short, but dang, it is powerful. It feels like an M120, M130, somewhere in there. The spring guide has a little washer there. Um, it's just a washer, it's not a bearing. The shaft itself is plastic, but as far as I can tell, the base of it is actually metal. So a lot of the spring tension is going to ride on this thing. Every time the piston is pulled back, it's going to put a lot of pressure on this thing because it's only held in the back by a screw. This gun does have the quick change spring feature, which is pretty cool. So this is going to take a lot of wear back here. The Ares version is all plastic, but I believe this one has a metal base. Now we can check out the cylinder assembly. This is the cylinder, cylinder head nozzle and tappet plate. The cylinder is chromium, which is nice, a little smoother than brass. And believe it or not, this one is not ported. This really does allow you to allow your barrel to determine your speed if you keep the same spring and everything. So if you use this and you put a longer barrel on there, longer than the 247 millimeter G36 barrel, that is going to really increase your speed. So that's pretty cool. If you put a suppressor and a longer barrel on this gun, you don't even have to touch the gearbox. You're probably going to lock 40 or 50 feet per second just doing that. The cylinder head has a slightly longer brass nozzle there, just for the G36, and the cylinder head is made out of plastic. The tappet plate is actually pretty flexible, which I like. I've had a lot of stiff ones, kind of just, ugh, they're not that great. But this one, it seems pretty nice. The nozzle has the little bar on top here so the nozzle does not rotate around. But strangely enough, it does not have the uh, interface bar here on the top that lines up with the hop-up. Now, this s and hop-up does not have the little bar that it pushes up with the uh, spring in there. So this is a little weird. Um, it's a different design, but it really does not take away from the function of how the gun works. Next up, let's check out the motor system and the gears. The motor on this gun, dang, it's got a lot of torque to it. The original Ares, which this is a clone of, it didn't have a lot of torque, so your rate of fire was a little lower. But this thing, this motor has a lot of torque, I'm surprised. It can easily pull the spring that's in there. The anti-reversal latch in this gun is a little beefier than usual, so that kind of helps with the higher power spring. The gears in this gun are actually pretty nice. The uh, teeth primarily are heat treated. You get the black one here, and the teeth on the lower bevel and the lower sector are also heat treated. The shim job is actually very good too, I'm quite surprised. Now another unusual thing about this gun is the bushings. You've got two solid steel bushings here and a bearing that sits on the bevel gear. Hmm. Well, whatever s and wants to do, I'll support it. Now, the electrical system of this gun is a little different, too. To start off, it does use 16-gauge wiring, so that's about average on an airsoft gun. But the trigger and all this stuff, it's weird. The trigger and the rear trigger section there are 100% team compatible. If this breaks for some reason, you can throw in a new one. You don't have to order a special one from Ares or s and But from there on, it's pretty much proprietary. The trigger here pushes on this bar. This bar will push on this button. Now that is a micro switch, very similar to what you find in a classic army A and K or Echo 1 M249. Dang, this gun is shooting pretty hot, anywhere from about 410 to 430 feet per second. Now, you guys are probably wondering, what should I upgrade on this gun? To be honest, not too much. Let's go ahead and see what we have to upgrade. There are five things I would swap out or upgrade. You guys leave this gun stock if you want, but if I were to actually uh, work on this gun a little bit and make it my own, this is what I would do. First off, I would swap out the spring. You know, this is a pretty high-powered spring. This is a small, co close-quarters gun. I would uh, drop this and probably throw in an M100 spring, get it to shoot around 350 or so. 
The bucking in this thing is all right, but I would try some different buckings, see if other ones get uh, better accuracy, better range, better air seal, stuff like that. Um, this might actually be the perfect bucking for it, but we shall see. Now, it's not very common for companies to throw in full cylinders in guns with short barrels. A few other companies have done it, and S&T have done it. So I would personally throw in a ported cylinder, that way you get a better FPS out of this gun. The final two items are the piston and piston head. The piston is alright, but if you want to retain the blowback, I really, really recommend throwing in a much more durable piston. These uh, just standardized pistons are not going to take the abuse of that and may fail on you. So I really recommend getting a new piston for that reason if you want to keep the blowback. If you want to disable the blowback, this thing is just fine. No worries. The piston head, I'd throw in a little more durable one, probably an aluminum model. You can get those and all these other upgrades at airsplat.com. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another episode of Inside the Mech Box when we check out another high-end G36.